Hello, looking at operations still, and we're looking at uh, lean production, which tends to be a method of production for larger businesses that they look into. Um, and here are some uh, lean production principles. Um, but we need to be aware of how businesses can become more efficient by the use of lean production. So lean production, what does it mean? Well, these are production methods that aim to use fewer resources by using these resources more efficiently. That's a bit of a mouthful. Some of these, um, some of these definitions are a bit convoluted, I think, but it's basically about using fewer resources and that can be anything any resource so space in your warehouse because obviously space you know you have to rent a larger space if you need more space materials there's a cost to the materials um stock stock is just money tied up in something that's not shifting that's not selling time you're paying um, for labor and if you're uh, if you've got machinery if you've got workers that are idle you're paying them for not doing anything and labor as well if you can be able to afford less labor that's going to reduce your cost so it's all looking at lean production really is looking at reducing those costs and um, it came into fashion really with Toyota and their uh, what they call the Toyota production system and this was after World War II and Toyota and other Japanese Japanese firms started to become very very efficient and uh, they started to grow really well um, and uh, Toyota uh, I think it's just been overtaken but at one point was the biggest car manufacturer in the world um, and one of the reasons that they've been able to be so dominant is because of this lean production or Toyota production system um, these methods that they've been using so the key principles so kaizen is one of the principles and this means continuous improvement um it also means that the concept of this or that the idea behind this is that small improvements every day add up to large improvements over time so we all know it's quite hard to change if you've been at home revising and you've not been maybe the most studious student uh, throughout your gcse course you would find it to do you would find it hard to do 10 hours of revision going from maybe doing no revision the day before it's very very difficult but if you extend the amount of time that you revised every day by 10 minutes all the time that's going to really build up and it's going to seem a lot easier for you to do so this is the idea behind it it is a Japanese idea as is you know Toyota it came from Toyota and here are the symbols it means good change because often change is seen as something that's um, scary because it's going into the unknown but this is a good change because it's small changes over time and we can see here when we have one-off improvements they're quite they're quite hard to get used to and they might be beneficial but um, they might be very difficult um, whereas if you have continuous improvement over time it's a much smoother transition it's easier for your employees to do and uh, Kaizen is again thinking of success or improvement being a journey not a destination so you don't just stop once you've made one little improvement you're continually looking for improvements all the time so this really focuses on quality and and being better and and continually being better all of the time one of the ways that some places do this is by having uh, quality circles they call them basically quality circles are just teams of people usually volunteers from the organization that meet to try and uh, discuss ways of improving quality um, so it's quite a simple idea um, but it's all about continuous improvement and we can see I just typed in to Google quality circles and this is one of the pictures I got back so um, I don't know what business this is from but obviously these are some people working together brainstorming ideas of how how to improve things. Um, just in time manufacturing is another key element of lean production. So just in time means making products only when they are ordered. So it in, means that you don't hold any stock. There's no just in case, you know, you don't make any products and then hold it. So in terms of the raw materials, you don't hold stock. And in terms of the finished product, you don't hold stock of them. So it sounds kind of crazy, doesn't it? But um, the idea behind this is that there's a lot of money tied up in this you know remember when we looked at cash flow in unit one you have to buy these supplies before you've made the finished product and been able to sell it so it, it caused it can cause having a lot of stock can cause a lot of cash flow problems um, which is why uh, when we're looking at uh, the current ratio they they say that um, you want definitely a ratio of above 
one, um, but traditionally it used to be two to one um, because a lot of the money was um, tied up in the stocks. Uh, now we've got kind of just in time manufacturing, it means that you don't have to have so much money tied up in um, stock, so that has been lowered over the last few decades, that current ratio. But the concept is don't hold any stocks and the benefits are just in time are you can reduce the cost of holding stock as I said before you can and you can produce exactly what the customer wants in terms of customization so this is actually the production method that a lot of car manufacturers use these days so they'll only manufacture the car once you've ordered it because there are so many ways that you can customize products now you can have different um, insides you know leather or upholstery or you can have different colors I know mini you can have the uh, one color on the outside but a different color on the roof you can have different accessories and all those types of things now there was one time many years ago my dogs in the background going crazy sorry if you can hear that um, there was one time a few years ago where uh, car manufacturers would just make a certain number of green cars a certain number of red cars a certain number of blue cars and then just hope that they'd sell they'd sell but now they only manufacture them when the customer orders them so this means that you can customize things um, and you, you're not kind of storing products um, they're not going to get damaged in storage because that was always a worry and they're not going to become obsolete because you're only going to make things when there's actual demand for them you're not kind of making things and hoping someone's going to buy them um, and it also, as I said before, it's going to increase cash flow as uh, you, there's no need to buy stock um, until you've got an order. So it reduces um, that cash. Oh, my gosh. Little mistake there. It reduces that cash outflow out. <laughs> sorry I must have made this presentation quite quickly okay problems are just in time though customers will have to wait and this waiting time is this what we call the lead time the time between ordering to you receiving the item um, and it's probably going to be you're going to have to wait longer than um, with a just-in-case system which would be your more traditional system where you're holding stocks um, so we'd see you know car manufacturing if you order a new car it might take you know six weeks to come um, um, DFS for sofas and things like that they only make them when they get orders as well so that's a just-in-time manufacturing method um, the cost of ordering supplies is also will increase because there are going to be lots of small orders rather than one large order so you're not going to get the um, economy of scale of bulk buying if you're a bit unsure about economies of scale as well that's in the presentation benefits and problems of growth and you're going, you're going to need really reliable suppliers. Now, I took my students to, a few years ago to visit Jag, Jaguar Land Rover based in Solihull. And they said that to be a supplier of them, you need to be able to get an order, uh, get um, the stock to that factory within four hours hours so that is a very very quick turnaround time there's no you know next day delivery on that one it's within four hours day and night because it's continuous production they're making these things all the way through the night as well and here is a, a news story from a few years ago um, when there was a tsunami in Japan and the, the Fukushima I think that's how you pronounce it nuclear power plant and and all the problems that were caused there but it actually affected the Honda factory in Swindon because this operated a just-in-time system they didn't hold any stocks and they were actually getting things delivered from Japan and because things were on a kind of standstill in Japan this affected the production process in Swindon which is in the UK and uh, the staff uh, had to go down to two days a week because there wasn't enough work for them so you need really reliable suppliers, uh, usually that are close by as well. Um, another concept of lean production is lean design, and this is producing new ideas designs as quickly as possible so it's this first mover what we call a first mover advantage getting your product to the market quicker than anybody else and it does mean that you can use price skimming which was part of the marketing course and you can charge a high price at first when there are a few competitors and as competitors enter the market you can lower the price over time but if you're first to the market you can gain that market share you're known as being very innovative as a brand and you can charge a high price for your product um, there's also a lot of use of CAD and CAM so computer-aided design and computer-aided manufacture now 
of your generation, this will be like second nature to you using computers and emailing things, but uh, only, you know, kind of, I mean, I suppose 20 years might seem quite a lot to you, but it's it's not really in the world of business, but only 20 years ago, um, people weren't sending emails and communicating that way. So the, the benefits of using CAD and CAM are that you can email designs to different people, people can share things, and um, there's a lot of automation these days. And we think about um, 3D printers as well, how amazing those are. So there's a lot more you can do and with technology these days to be able to design your products and get your products manufactured. That means that you can get them to market much more quickly. And um, also we, we use um, careful planning of the process. So traditionally, when you were thinking of uh, designing your product, you know, bringing out a research and development stage, you'd have stage one and then stage two and then stage three after stage two and then stage four after stage three. But now they do this thing called simultaneous engineering, um, which means that you might have stage one and then stage two might start um, halfway through stage one and then stage three starts halfway through stage two and then stage four at the end so you try basically the, the idea between simultaneous engineering is doing as many tasks at the same time as possible to try and reduce that time that it takes to design your product and get it to the market and to reduce that kind of research and development time because that's traditionally been quite a long amount of time but if you're spending too long designing product you're going to move you're going to lose that first move advantage Another um, key concept that goes with lean uh, production is cell production. So this is where teams of workers um, are completing whole tasks. So remember when we're looking at flow production, and you can use lean, uh, lean production methods with flow production, but traditionally with flow production, you'd have a division of labor and specialization. So you'd have a lot of repetitive, boring tasks that one person's doing it. And they get really good at it, but it's really, really boring. Well, with this, you have much greater use of teamwork. And it means that it's, very, it's much more motivating and interesting than specialization and division of labor. And there's lots of theories out there that say that people work better when they're able to be in more sociable settings, so work with other humans rather than isolated ses um, settings. So there's lots of motivational theories that say that human contact is very, very important for people to feel motivated. However, the problem with this is your workers do have to be much more flexible and highly skilled than somebody that's just completing a very simple, repetitive task, because they're going to have to have lots of different skills to do cell production. So that's lean design and remember that this, these are techniques that you can use with any type of production, you know, batch production, flow production. But what this is all about is about cutting the waste and reducing the time it takes to produce the product.